Uh, all the way down to about 300 knots. So it's, and then tragically it impacted in the World Trade Center. The fire down there, we could see just a little bit earlier that underneath just before I still let me fire you just for a second. some of the soot and some of the flames. The picture there that you're seeing is of the first plane, American Flight 11, hitting the first of the World Trade Center towers at 8.45 yesterday morning, just under 24 hours ago. We've shown some of it now. This is the latest new video we have. You see the plane coming in high speed, aiming for the mid-level. A terrorist and this is the heart of a city and a nation. That was the second flight, United Flight 175, and this is the reverse side of the building. See, the plane actually pierced the building. There were several and angles. Virtually came out the other side. Yet, yet another view the plane hitting. It's almost like the building swallowed the plane. Yeah. Yes. And here you see this aircraft below. Did you see that? Yeah. And if you be looking closely on the right hand side, you see it hitting here. Indeed, Westminster said it's almost as if the building swallowed the plane and then belched back up. Well, nobody's ever seen photographs like that because nothing like this has ever happened before. The plane. Now, different view. Both buildings are aflame. All right, and then the building that was hit second comes tumbling down. That was the one where the airplane came in particularly quickly and hit the building at about 471. The Chrysler building. Now the second tower, which was actually hit first by American Flight 11, begins to crumble. disappear. And since the, the most recent collapse, which happened just a short while ago, Building 7, a 47-story building that part of the World Trade Center complex collapsed. That building had been, we were told, completely evacuated. But the fate of people on the ground, including rescue workers, as it came tumbling down, we simply don't know. But it had been threatening to collapse, had been on the verge of collapse for a long while, so perhaps, perhaps, most of the area had been evacuated, but who could have anticipated this kind of incredibly dense and fast-moving smoke, which covers many blocks in New York. the anti-American rhetoric, and importantly, too, and this is something that we've noticed throughout those of us who monitor this stuff, that American-related targets were hit in Israel. The Sparrow restaurant was uh, a heavily trafficked tourist destination in a part of Jerusalem that had Americans there. All right, I Professor, I mean, I, I understand that, but you have to really narrow it down to which organization. I mean, we're, we're putting pieces together. Have any estimates, and properly, people in New York and in... Washington around the Pentagon are not commenting. They shouldn't because we don't have any concept. But as you reported a few moments ago, Mayor Giuliani uh, did talk about the numbers of injured, saying at least, and these are very rough numbers, at least 2,100 people injured, 600 taken to hospitals, 1,500 walking wounded, he said, many of whom have been evacuated to New Jersey's Liberty State Park right across uh, the river, the Hudson River, from where the World Trade Centers were. And we have some further reports. Uh, ABC's Cynthia McFadden, who has been down in that area all day long, says that a triage center has been set up on the Chelsea Piers in New York City. Now, the Chelsea Piers is not a hospital area at all. It's an area of, that used to be uh, shipping piers along the Hudson River and lower Manhattan and uh, is now used for recreational purposes. There are tennis courts and golf driving ranges and uh, other things there, uh, meeting rooms, that kind of thing. It's a commercial operation, but uh, a triage center has been set up there and 50 makeshift operating rooms are being prepped and hundreds of ambulances are there waiting to take injured away from that facility, but they are doing treatment of people right uh, on the site or nearby 
uh, at Chelsea Piers. Reports from some of the hospitals uh, that are taking the injured. St. Vincent's Hospital here in New York, uh, the numbers again very rough, but an estimate of over 200 that have been taken in there, three dead, 18 in critical condition, and the most chilling quote that you can hear, uh, Dr. Stephen Stern there at St. Vincent's Hospital quoted it as saying, hundreds of people, hundreds of people coming in have been burned from head to toe. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world and no one will keep that light from shining. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. Our military is powerful and it's prepared. Our emergency teams are working in New York City and Washington, D.C. to help with local rescue efforts. Our first priority is to get help to those who have been injured and to take every precaution to protect our citizens at home and around the world from further attacks. The functions of our government continue without interruption. Federal agencies in Washington, which had to be evacuated today, are reopening for essential personnel tonight and will be open for business tomorrow. Our financial institutions remain strong and the American economy will be open for business as well. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. I appreciate so very much the members of Congress who have joined me in strongly condemning these attacks. And on behalf of the American people, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their condolences and assistance. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night, and God bless America.